thought I wanted to try a thrift store we hadn't been to before. And based on our experiences at their other locations, my hopes weren't high, but I can't wait to go back to the store because they had such a fun selection of antiques and they were cheap antiques. And if I had a place in my house that I could put these or a way to haul them home, I would have been in trouble. Apparently the secret to getting decent camera angles is to film the thing you're excited about from halfway across the room and then get up closer for a better look. Yes, these were in sad condition, but they were dirt cheap and it's real wood and intricate details and dovetail drawers. And I could seriously love this thing. It was half price of $45. Someone left a very kind comment on one of my videos that one of my vintage pieces should be refinished because it was a bit shabby. Her intentions were good, but I can quite happily live with a bit shabby. This is the one I wanted to bring home. I'm not sure entirely what it is. I think that those slanted compartments are probably for books or magazines. Of course, my immediate response was, you could store cross-stitch kits and project bags in those, and this thing is amazingly pretty. And if my sewing room was in better organizational shape right now, we might have had to go back and make a second trip to get this. It wasn't as cheap as some of the other pieces, but it was in better shape and I kind of love it. This sewing machine is cast iron and that pattern is molded into the metal. I don't know how common that was back in the day. I'm used to seeing paint and decals. This was pretty. If you're looking at old sewing machines at thrift stores or antique malls or wherever, check to make sure that it has the bobbin case. It looks like this one is in there, but I didn't want to pull it out and then have to put it back together. People steal the bobbins and bobbin cases from these old machines. When grandma had her antique mall, they had to pull them out and keep them up at the cash register. Because it's hard to find exactly the one you need to go with the machine you own. And if you're going to decide whether a machine is worth buying or not, whether that case is in there should probably factor into your decision. $40. I have no idea if this machine works. If I had actually been being practical and checking it out, I would have checked for the electrical cord and the foot pedal, but... Even though the electric light is right there on it, maybe it didn't occur to me that this is not a treadle machine. This is an electric machine. This little table with its scuffed up paint really appealed to me. In a few years, I think my boys are going to be furnishing apartments and their taste veers to old furniture too, although it veers very sharply towards 1970s pressed wood, fake carved I've got some interesting pieces in the attic that we had to bring home from the thrift store because it was so cheap and they loved it so much. And this sewing machine isn't nearly as fun as the last one. I, I can tell you it's vintage and metal and probably weighs a ton. And that is the only guess I'm willing to hazard about that one. I love camelback trunks. They just all want to follow me home. It didn't. I have enough of them. But look at all the details and the trim. And it still has sort of its original inside stuff. And it has a picture of a steamboat. And I get very romantic and gushy about old trunks. It is just what I do. If you watch the channel, you already know that. Did I mention that I like this thrift store? The shelves of bric-a-brac were pretty sparse and 
most of the stuff there was newer. I saw a few bits of vintage, but not a whole lot. Nothing that really tempted me at all, except for a mug from a company that my husband used to work for 25 years ago. I thought about it and then decided we really don't have that fond of memories of that place. Are you seeing anything that catches your eye? Because I saw one or two things that merited a closer look. There was this milk glass candy dish and it is the grapes. And I don't know if the grapes are just the most common thing that these companies made or if it's just what my eyes gravitate to, but I have seen grapes in every possible place for months and months and I guess that's a good thing because they don't tempt me. I did see a fabulous candy dish with at another shop with birds and so much detail I was almost afraid to breathe near it, which is why I didn't pull out my camera and didn't take a video. Sorry about that. In hindsight, I wish I'd taken pictures because I'd love to show it off to you. Old records, I want a gramophone. I want to be able to have something that I can wind up and play old music in the way that it would have been played back in the day. I've been told not to buy any more records for dad's gramophone, so I'm being good and I'm not buying any more Glenn Miller or whatever else. Somebody had china like this. I think it was one of my grandma's. Not the china that we used at all the major holidays, but some is around somewhere. They had a bit of a craft shop. There was something in here I wanted to talk to you about, but now through the plastic, a week and a half later, I cannot tell for the life of me what that something was. Something in there caught my interest, and I did not buy it, and I don't regret not buying it because I don't remember what it was. I keep looking at scrapbooking paper, thinking about junk journaling, and keep holding myself in check, which is a good thing. Compressed sponges are a new one for me. That, I mean, those are old. I guess they're for stenciling. Not something I've stumbled across before. I love finding old craft supplies. That always makes me happy. And this is Will Vinton Studios modeling clay. The actual Will Vinton Studios aren't terribly far from here. So there's got to be a connection. Not something I've ever seen before. But I can see why it would be inspiring, especially if you just watch some of their movies. They had these huge bags of rubber stamps and they weren't that expensive. And for someone who was into card making or rubber stamping, that just seems like it would be a really fun challenge to buy some random stamps and see what you could do with them. Kind of the equivalent of my bags of fabric. And on the way out, I almost missed the baby buggies. I don't know why. But old baby buggies, I want to bring them all home. I don't own a single one yet because usually they're more expensive than is in my budget. And I don't have room for one. And here's some needlepoint from another store that just had to go in a video somewhere. Thanks for watching. I'm Michelle. This is my romantic tangle. Did anything catch your eye? If it did, leave a comment and let me know because that helps me decide what I want to get pictures of for future videos. I look forward to thrifting with you again soon.